This video gives a number of worked examples of calculating determinants using the rules. So previous videos introduced the concepts of a determinant and lots of shortcuts for working these out. So the focus here is going to be on worked examples showing how we might use the rules to compute determinants efficiently. Now remember, you can always check your answers using MATLAB if you're not sure if they're correct. So first, a summary of the rules. If you've got an upper or lower triangular a matrix, the determinant is the product of the diagonal elements. If a matrix has got an entire row or column of zeros, then the determinant is zero. If you scale any row by lambda, then you scale the determinant by lambda. If you scale the whole matrix by lambda, then you change the determinant by lambda to the n. If you add a multiple of any row or column to another row or column, this does not change the determinant. If a multiple of a row or column is equal to another row or column, the determinant is zero. If you interchange rows or columns, then it changes the sign of the determinant, and the determinant of a product is the product of the determinants. So these are the rules that we're going to use with these worked examples. And the key thing is to pick the rules that you think will make the determinant computation most efficient. First example then, find the determinant using the properties. And what you can see here straight away is that this determinant is lower triangular. So by inspection, I just need the product of the diagonal elements. So A equals 3 times minus 1 times 2. Second one. Again, you can see that this matrix is lower triangular because I've got all those zeros in the upper triangular. So by inspection, the determinant is the product of the diagonal parts. So I get minus 1 times 2 times 3 times 2. Now this one's a bit trickier because it sort of looks like it might be upper or lower triangular, but it's not because of where the zeros are. But here I can use the column rule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one column 1. So I'm going to swap the first and third columns. So the determinant of A is going to be equal to minus the determinant. So because I've swapped the columns, I need the minus sign. And so column 3, 5, 0, 0. Column 2 is as it was, and column 1 becomes column 3, so I get 1, 6, 4. And now, of course, you can see that this new matrix is clearly triangular, and therefore the determinant of A is going to be minus, because I've got the minus sign from swapping the columns, and then 5 times minus 1 times 4. What about this one? Well, again, this is the same sort of issue. You can see it looks like maybe it could be triangular because there's lots of zeros, it's sparse, but it isn't. So I need to ask myself, how can I get this in the form that I want? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap column three with column, uh, sorry, row three with row two first. So that's going to give me five, zero, 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 three, minus 12, minus five, zero, minus 1, 2, 0, 0, 104, 56, 13, 2. So I've done one uh, row swap, so I get a minus sign. But now you can see there's another obvious swap. I can swap these two, row 3 and row 2. So this, the two minuses, I'm going to get another minus, so the minuses will disappear. So I'm now going to get 5, 0, 0, 0 minus 1, 2, 0, 0, 3, minus 12, minus 5, 0, and 104, 56, 13, 2. And now, of course, what can you see? I've managed to make the matrix lower triangular, so the determinant is going to be equal to 5 times 2 times minus 5 times 2. So a couple of simple row operations has made the determinant calculation obvious. Next one then. Well, this one's less obvious. There's only one zero, so I, I need to resort to some other 
properties. And what I want to do is make this calculation a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make row 1 equal to what it was minus 5 over 2 times row 3. Now why am I doing that? The reason I've chosen that, and it is arbitrary, is I've got a 0 here, and so what I want to do is try and get a 0 in this position here, because if I can get a 0 in that top right position, I've got two zeros on the same column, and that will make the determinant calculation easier. So the modulus of g, sorry, the determinant of g is going to be the determinant of, now, row 1 minus 5 over 2, row 3. What's that going to give me? It's going to give me minus 1.5. I'm going to get 6 minus 10, which is minus 4, and 5 minus 5 is 0. And the other rows are unchanged. And the other thing you remember, of course, is that adding a multiple of a row to another row doesn't change the determinant. But now, having done that row operation, I can see the determinant has reduced to a much easier form. So I can now write 2 times the determinant of minus 1.5, minus 4, 2, minus 1, which you can see is just 19, because 2 by 2 determinants are straightforward. Next one then. Well, again here, I can see there's only two zeros, and I'm saying, OK, is there a pattern here? Is there something I can do? Well, there are different patterns you can look for, but in this particular case, there's one pattern that's sort of screaming at you. You can see that the 3 and the minus 1, there's a factor of minus 3. The 4 and the minus 12, there's a factor of minus 3. And the 5 and minus 14 are actually quite close as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's try essentially adding 3 times row 1 to row 2. So the determinant of b is going to become minus 1, 4, 5, 0. And if I add 3 times minus 1 to 3, I get 0. 3 times 4 to minus 12, I get 0. 3 times 5 to minus 14, I get 1. And 3 times to 0 to 0, I get 0. And now I've got 5, 18, 3, 2. I haven't changed the other ones. 104, 54, 13, and 6. Now, having got there, I can look for another pattern to see, can I simplify this a little bit more? And indeed, you can. So, if you look, well, in fact, what I'm going to do before I do that is I'm going to reduce this to a 3 by 3 determinant, because what you can see is I've got three zeros on the, th the second row. So I can reduce this to minus the determinant of minus 1, 4, 0, 5, 18, 2, and 104, 54, 6. So I've reduced it to a much simpler form. Um, by recognising that I can expand along the second row and recognising because of the position of the 1, I end up with a minus. But now what you'll see is, look, 54 and 18 are 3 times. There's a factor of 3. 2 and 6, there's a factor of 3. So what I can do is I can add 3, to, oh, sorry, subtract 3 times row 2 from row 3. So I'm going to end up with a determinant. It's still got a minus sign. Um, minus 1, 4, 0, 5, 18, 2. And if I subtract 3 times row 2 from row 3, I'm going to get an 89 here, a 0 here, and a 0 here. And now, of course, you can see that I've got quite a sparse matrix, and so the determinant can almost be written down by inspection. So the determinant of B is going to be 89 times 8, and there's a minus sign as well, so we better put the minus here. So minus 89 times 8. Next one then. This matrix is totally full, and you might look at this and say, yikes, where do I start? But again, there's often simplifications if you look for them. 
So if we look here, between the 2 and the 10, there's a factor of minus 5. Between the 1 and the minus 5, there's a factor of minus 5. Between the 6 and the minus 30, there's a factor of minus 5. Between the minus 4 and the 20, there's a factor of minus 5. So what you can write is that column 3 is minus 5 times column 2. Now the rule is, if one column is a multiple of another column, then the determinant is 0. So I don't need to do any calculations here. I can see straight away that the determinant is 0. Next one then. Now this one's not quite so simple. Um, it's a bit more of a mess. But what you've got to do is say, OK, what patterns might I be able to see here? And what I'm going to do is say, well, there is a sort of obvious pattern staring at you. You can see there's a 3, 2, 3 here. And there's a minus 6, minus 4, minus 6 here. You can see there's a multiply of 2. So what I'm going to do is add twice row 2 to row 4. So I'm going to go row 4 becomes row 4 plus 2 row 2. So now the determinant of h is going to be equal to minus 4, 2, minus 10, 8, 3, 2, 3, 2. 2 minus 1, 5 minus 12, and then you'll see you end up with 0, 0, 0, and then you get minus 9 plus 2, which is minus 5. So you'll see that simple change has made the determinant equivalent to a 3 by 3 determinant. So let's write that out. So I've got the determinant of h equals minus 5 into the determinant of minus 4, 2, minus 10, 3, 2, 3, 2, minus 1, 5. So it's already looking much easier, uh, having done a minimal of computation. But now what you might notice is that there's a similarity between these two rows. OK, what can you see? You can see that row 1 is actually a multiple of row 2. So row 1 equals minus 2 times row 3. And because those two rows are multiples of each other, the determinant of h has to be 0. So again, you find some simple operations, and the answer comes out to be an easy one. Final example then, this one's got x's in, just to show that you can use the rules even with x's and it's not too bad. And the key thing here is to say, look at this second column. You can see the second column, all multiples of x, so you've got an easy way to get some zeros. So I can do things like, I can say row 1 goes to row 1 plus row 3. That will get rid of the x. Row 2 goes to row 2 um, plus twice row 3. Is it plus? Yeah. So let's see what that gives us. So our new determinant, 2 minus x plus 6x is going to be 2 plus 5x. x minus x, 0. x plus 1 plus 2x plus 1 is going to be 3x plus 2. Second row, 2x plus 3 plus 12x is going to give me 14x plus 3. 2x minus 2x, 0. 4x minus 5 plus 4x plus 2 is going to give me 8x minus 3. And the last row is as it was. But now, of course, because I've got two zeros in the second column, I can do an expansion about the second column, and I can write down by inspection that the determinant is going to be minus x, and because of the position of that minus x, doing the expansion there, I'm going to get another minus sign, and then I'll get the determinant of 2 plus 5x, 3x plus 2, 14x plus 3, and 8x minus 3. Now the answer is not a, a simple one, but because that's now a 2 by 2 determinant, you can write the answer down by inspection.